Hey everybody, it's Whip Ray, and I'm here doing another Empyrean Galactic Survival How to Set Up a Dedicated Server video. Uh, came to my attention recently oops, um, that uh, they had updated the configuration file with new settings and stuff like that, so I wanted to go over that and kind of touch base with all of that in another video. So uh, here we are. Um, the biggest thing that changed between all the different versions is now there's this giant block at the bottom for difficulty settings. And uh, most of it doesn't seem to affect things too much. Uh, if, if you leave it all commented out, it just assumes defaults, which means the stuff that's here, like the medium, normal, 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 etc., that should be taken as the default option if it's not actually commented in. Um, I'll just go through all the stuff real quick, and we can kind of go from there, and then I'll show you what mine looks like. So at the very top, we have um, the comment section with these little uh, pound symbols, or hashtag. Um, that means it's commented out, that means whatever this, uh, whatever the configuration, uh, the program that run, that reads the configuration, uh, it will ignore that line uh, in the code. So here, dedicated server settings to use your own dedicated server, or to get dedicated configuration file, um, you need to include uh, this little bit right here, this dash dedicated my dedicated dot, uh, my dedicated config dot yaml. Um, the important thing to note here is whatever you're going to name your dedicated uh, server configuration file, that needs to be the name .yaml when you put it into your, uh, where'd it go, is this it? into this guy right here. And uh, when you put that little um, arrow pointing towards where the co uh, configuration file is, um, you need to make sure that you put it in the my configure, in my imperial, or blah, words. Uh, you put it into the uh, batch file, which will be in your install folder here. Um, what I did to make sure that I keep an original and I keep a uh, version for myself, um, the original files are uh, dedicated.yaml and Empyrean dedicated, um, just .batch file. What I did is I made a copy of these called my dedicated um, yaml. Oh, shut up. Shut up, shut up. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I made a uh, my dedicated .yml, and I made a uh, my Empyrean dedicated batch file, um, so that uh, when there's patches and stuff like that, it doesn't completely wipe my configuration files and whatnot. I have something to fall back on. Um, so anywho, uh, when you're doing the uh, config file, you have to make sure you uh, point well, with your batch file. You have to make sure you're pointing to the right configuration file. I've had issues. I've had users before where they were just like, "It's not wanting to work," and it's because they were using the default name as opposed to the actual name um, for the configuration file in here. So when you're doing this, the only thing you have to do to the uh, launcher batch file is just add a dash dedi dedicated and then the name of your configuration file .yaml, and that will tell uh, the dedicated server batch file that runs it what uh, configuration file to use. So that's the first step is making sure that you know your errors are pointing to the right configuration thing. Uh, step after that is going through the actual configuration bit. Um, in here we have server config. This is just the stuff that directly messes with server configuration. Uh, if anyone's wondering, I'm using Notepad++. It makes editing this stuff so much easier because it color codes a lot of things. Um, but yeah, we have server port, which is default at 30,000. I suggest leaving it there unless you've got a reason to uh, need to change it. Uh, the name of your server here with the server name bit. Uh, doesn't matter what you put there. Um, I was able to use like special characters like commas and stuff like that and apostrophes with no issues. Um, here's the first thing we run into. Uh, when you're moving, removing these comments, these uh, hashtag and pound signs that are commenting out these uh, server passwords and stuff like that, make sure that everything lines up still. Um, the configuration file is very picky, and if you have like a single space like that, um, it will cause the uh, dedicated server can, uh, launcher to just crash as soon as it starts because it's an invalid configuration. So you need to make sure that all of these are precisely lined up with each other and it should be one, two, three, four spaces from the left is where these should all start. Um, if you look at the original configuration file, server port and server name are at the right uh, indent and so everything else when you're doing edits down here needs to be on that same indent. Um, anywho, moving from um, server name to password, um, I highly recommend putting a password on your server. Uh, mine is usually some sort of play on meat, because um, it used to be a meat cutter. Um, but uh, server password is there so other people can't log into it. Uh, maximum of players. If you're hosting your own server, um, depending on how much hardware you have, you might want to try and keep that at a lower number. Uh, if you feel confident with a higher number, go for it. 
Uh, server reserve play fields. Um, what it mentions is the idle play field ser the server holds in reserve. Um, they recommend at least two. I usually use two. It doesn't cause me any issues when me and Tornath are doing things. Um, you could probably get away with one. But if you leave that commented out, like here, it assumes it's just going to default to one. And same thing with the players and they're not being a password at all. Because uh, if there's no password, it won't put one on there. Uh, next thing is the server description. Uh, these first two comments are going to stay coming out because it's just telling you how to fill the thing out and it's telling you how many characters this thing can go out for. Uh, the actual thing where the server description is this third line here. Make sure it lines up with the other um, entries in the uh, table. And then you can put in all kinds of like punctuation stuff like that in here. Um, as you see, mine's got my uh, plug-in for my YouTube channel. Um, over here is how often all the uh, uh, play fields are going to get stopped every real hours. Um, they get a warning message. Um, I run my machine, um, I only run my dedicated server while I'm actually playing, so it's not a big deal for me. But if you're running something that's going to be on 24-7, this is something to look into. Um, and then 48 real-time hours. Uh, Telnet is for when you're trying to, when you're renting a server typically. It allows you to access the configuration of the server and stuff like that without actually having to be physically at the box. Uh, if you're running your own server in your own house or whatnot, um, you really don't need Telnet because you can just go directly into your Steam install and play with the settings there for the server. Um, but yeah, that's the, the port for the Telnet into the server and then the password. Um, you would normally log into the uh, machine using its IP address, so that's why that's not listed here because you would probably already know what that is. Um, the EAC Active is the anti-cheat software. As far as I know, I don't think that's active yet, So, and I believe they mentioned to leave it off. So um, what uh, we're doing there is uh, we're just leaving this off right now so it doesn't cause anything to break. So. Uh, maybe later on when they release a thing that says, you know, go ahead and turn it on, I'll make a note of that. But for the time being, I just leave it off because I believe it's going to cause an issue with running the server. Um, after that, that's just the server config. Now we're going to go to the game config. And again, formatting, make sure everything's on the same line here with the same four spaces from the left. Um, over here, though, we have, uh, here's the original, go down over here. It keeps, it. Uh, this is the default game save uh, thing, so if you want to have a different set of saves, you can specify it here. Um, survival for the server is either creative or survival mode, um, and then your world seed. Um, creative or survival depends on how you want to have your server set up. Seed, if you're trying to match someone's uh, specific setup of worlds or use someone else's pre made thing that has a really good uh, selection of ores and whatnot, but you would use that seed and try to match the world spawns. Um, down here we have uh, everything is mentioned in real time hours. So one round of real time is 24 hours in game. Decay time is uh, when you have structures that are too small or structures that don't have a core, how long it takes for them to decay and just kind of disappear. Um, warp time or wipe time is how long before things are just wiped completely when no one's been there for a while. Uh, protect time is uh, when you go online, how long they're protected before people can start messing with them. Um, if you're running like what I do, where I just run it when I'm playing, or if you're running it with just friends, um, these aren't going to be that big of an important deal, but if you're running a server 24-7, these are kind of the big deal to make sure things don't get too cluttered and make sure, you know, just everything gets tidied up every so often. Um, max structures, maximum number of structures. Uh, limit is 255. Um, Anti-grief distance, if you're of different factions, or even if you're not a part of a faction, you're just trying to build it with other people, this is how far away in meters um, that, you have to, that you have to be before you can build anything else. Um, I remember in one of our previous videos that we did, me and Tornath were trying to uh, make a base, and we hadn't gotten the faction thing right, and so it wouldn't let me put any structures down next to his thing because we were too close. And then the enable trading is the new trading market feature, um, and it lets you, you know, buy and sell things, like, globally, uh, like resources, equipment, whatnot. Down here at the bottom are difficulty settings. I'm going to go over to mine because I actually put mine in. Um, this is really the the meat of the uh, configuration process, and again, it's got to make sure you have to make sure that the um, the formatting is exactly four spaces from the right, uh, left side, or otherwise it'll error out. Um, in here, you can set how many uh, resources you're given when you spawn in, easy, medium, and hard. Uh, progression is how quickly you gain XP, fast, normal, and slow. <clears throat> the um, average amount of ore each deposit contains, rich, normal, and poor. Um, I'm assuming everything before was like normal 
for lack of a better word. Um, I'm planning on doing on my server a bit of a harder experience to kind of make some more interesting content so everyone gets to hear me bitch. So I've put my stuff onto a hard escape pod content, slow player progression, and for the most part, leaving everything else the same because um, I'm going to need all the extra ore. Um, drone number, the drone based attacks, uh, difficulty of the drone attacks, infinite waves, number of drones, etc. Uh, difficulty of the drone presence in general, um, number of drones on the planet, uh, spawn rate, uh, NBC spawns. Uh, I remember previously they used to be fucking nuts until they toned it down a bit. Uh, if you want to make it go back to fucking nuts, this is the way to do it. Or if you want to make it really slow, this is also your setting. Um, tax strength, uh, how tough the enemies are, uh, construction time. Uh, your default craft speed of constructors, eh, personal preference, I'd say, and then, um, blueprint production time for your, uh, factory. Um, one thing I've noticed is it takes an incredibly long time for larger projects, so I'm just gonna kind of put this on faster, but, um, yeah, those are all the new settings for, uh, the Alpha 2.1, I want to say it was. Um, you just have to make sure everything is in inline, or else the damn server will immediately crash as soon as it, um, starts. And we will go and we will launch mine and show as an example. So in here, um, I have my dedicated that YAML and my dedicated, my Imperium dedicated here. And I made sure I added the dash dedicated, my dedicated YAML so that the uh, dedicated server knows what configuration file to load in. Because when I was prepping for this video, I s misspelled the back end and I forgot to put the dash dedicated on there. And it started a server, but uh, it was using all the defaults. So it wasn't too great. But you have to make sure you include this part when you launch it. And then this is what you actually launch, the batch file, not the uh, not the actual, this guy here. You don't use this one, you use uh, this guy here. Or if you're using the default one, it would be uh, my, where'd it go? Uh, Imperium Dedicated would be the other one. So I'm going to launch my Imperium Dedicated. Actually, I'm going to make a shortcut on my desktop because I'm lazy. Launch that. Gives a little important notice bit. You just hit a T to continue. You launch into here. See, it says uh, two uh, things requested, reserve available. That should fill in once it loads that in the rest of the way because my computer's still booting it. And then we're going to launch Imperion. And we should see our server on the list. Yep, there it is. Variable one, two, none requested. Um, in order to get the list, uh, to get your server to appear on the list, you'll have to do firewall settings sometimes to make sure that um, your machine is allowed to talk out. Um, I don't cover that on this because there are just so many different routers and hardware configurations out there that it's almost impossible for me to really nail that down. Things to look into are port forwarding, port triggering, and uh, firewalls. So we're going over here. Here's my server. I'm going to connect in. And you have to put a password in. Boom. I probably will be changing this password. And there we go. And then you can pick your start playing, and then you go. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'm usually really good about getting back to you about them. Um, and until then, we'll see you later. Toodles.